right, so we're knocking down the miles here. Heading out to Nebraska, going on my first ever mule deer hunt. It's going to be a solo hunt. I'm just going out into the wilderness camping and kind of doing a almost like a base camp to set up and just branch out from there in the morning. So I've got about nine, ten days set aside for this, and you know, really my only expectations are trying to just have a you know a, a cool experience and make some really cool memories and hopefully be able to film a little bit of action for you guys. But as far as deer, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of looking for a representative of the species. If I can get something that's, you know, a decent buck, you know, I could care less about the size. I just want something that looks like a mule deer. And on top of that, most important is to have some really cool memories, maybe learn some things along the way. Hopefully we'll get some cool film for you. So about six hours into the drive right now, I've got about another 10 hours left. So obviously I'm not going to make that all straight. Here in about four or five hours, I'll probably pull over to rest area, get some sleep in this little vehicle here, and wake up and finish the run. Tomorrow, uh, the only game plan is to get to my hunting area, and I'm going to hike back in and get camp set up and do a little bit of scouting. The season doesn't even start tomorrow, so tomorrow's kind of my free day to get prepared, learn things, and figure out where I'm going. I've never actually been out to this area. I've just done all my research online through aerial photos and stuff so tomorrow is going to be a big setup and learning day and then the day after that I'm going to get to the hunt so really pumped hopefully we have some good action and I'm going to get back to this awesome sunset here. Windy out here. I don't know if you guys be able to hear this or not, but I'm trying to block the wind as best as I can. <laughs> but I'm about three miles back in right now. It's getting higher and higher, and I'm going to keep working this way. Probably about another half mile. I want to get up on top of some elevation, set up camp. That way, I can do some scouting tonight and be able to uh, hopefully have a game plan for the morning. So cut this short because I'm almost out of energy and breath. But man, I tell you what, it's pretty beautiful out here. Half mile left. Whew, check out that view. I'll tell you what, this is uh, probably going to be home sweet home for at least a day or two. I'm going to try it out up here. It's a little windy, so hopefully it's not killing the mic, but uh, I'm way up on top of the peaks out here, which would be good because then I can just scoot out that way towards evening and set up the spotting scope and be able to just sit there and glass over all the different holes and valleys and stuff like that and see what we can find. But the only thing that concerns me, about a four mile walk and then I've done about a mile of scouting. I have not came across a deer track or any deer poop, So, nor have I seen a deer. So that could be a bad sign, but it's been super hot. Uh, right now it's only about 1230 and it's already about 85 degrees and it's just going to keep getting warmer so could be that their movement was all first thing in the morning and they're going to be holed up until the last two hours of daylight so we're going to get camp set up here should be a cool little place to uh, tuck in and chill out take myself a little nap here and then we'll get back put it all together and uh, see if we can get out there and try and chase some uh, muleys here. So I know my eyes are red. And I promise I'm not doing anything that I shouldn't be. This is just the result of what happens when you've got 15, 20 mile per hour wind staring you straight in the face on top of this huge cliff up here, right into my eyes after having fallen asleep on this uh, nice little bed here. Something about a 16 hour drive, two hours of sleep, and 
then adding a three and a half mile walk uphill with an 80 pound backpack on that kind of a uh, takes it out of you I don't know if you, can, you guys can even hear this this wind is tough up here I've got the uh, dead cat mic on so hopefully that'll help but uh, I'll tell you what I was so tired this rock here felt like the my pillow guy not the guy the pillow that he makes but I'm so tired I fell asleep up here on my little perch so I'm sitting up here we got about two three hours until dark so probably here in the next hour hour and a half they should start getting up and moving around cross your fingers I still have yet to see any sign of deer out here but man does it look nice and sit up top here until dark, just glassed in. Campsite's about, oh, three quarters of a mile that way. So uh, we'll just see what we come up with, and if we don't see anything, then I'll be back doing this in some other area in the morning. So stick it out and see what happens. Yet to lay eyes on even a doe anywhere on in the distance, running off anything. So I don't know. I guess uh, tomorrow's a brand new day. Wake up and see if we can put some eyes on one so cross our fingers because uh, it's two strikes so far I'm hoping I'm not gonna strike out here and have to start looking for a new place it's a long walk well got a little hairy last night in the tent wind came through so strong I was in about an hour I had to actually hold my hands up against the wall where the wind was hitting to keep the tent from flipping over <laughs> and that little tiny tent just big enough to fit one person has nine stakes on it holding it down I still had to hold it up but hey look at this you know they talk about the uh, uh, calm after the storm and before it but I'm gonna talk about the calm after the storm look at this A great place to be. Sun's just popping up. I've only been out for about 10-15 minutes and I've already had my first bit of excitement. Got the spotting scope all set up. I saw two of them. Two of them ended up being cows, but they're so far away they looked like muleys. So, all right, we're gonna get to glassing. Probably just gonna spend a lot of time today glassing moving. If I can't figure out anything, I can't see anything, I'm going to start looking for water. And if I don't see sign of tracks around water, if I find it, I'm out of here and I'm going to scoot somewhere else. But man, it's just too good of ground to not have deer on it. So we're going to get to looking. So far I've seen cows, coyotes, and the other predator. A couple of humans. No deer yet. night man calm quiet perfect full moon stars out quiet as can be I'm surprised I'm not hearing coyotes really here's the uh, status you know I could have had tons and tons of landscapes beautiful you know showing you guys all kinds of cool scenery and uh, I could have pictures of me walking miles back and forth and stuff you know that's the only kind of video I could have got <laughs> I have yet to lay eyes on a piece of deer poop period like i don't know if out here in nebraska maybe they have like deer poop eating moles or something because uh it's either that or else there's just no deer out here period i've never ever paid attention to deer poop or deer tracks for that matter because i'm used to hunting places where you see so much of it that you know you don't even think twice but I have yet to come across the first track, the first piece of poop, and obviously sign of the first deer. I've got a limited amount of days to work with, so I'll we'll go back to the drawing board. I'm packing up, two days of looking, daylight to dark without seeing anything at all. I've, I've only got so much time. I'm going to pack up, walk back out of here three and a half miles, and we're going to go to plan B. So get some good sleep, wake up in the morning, big walk in front of me, and uh, we'll start her back over.
I must say, I'm really sad to leave this area. It's just a sweet, awesome area. I woke up to uh, hens, Merriam's, chirping and yelping in the background. What a cool start to the morning, but I don't have enough days to just keep staring at empty fields and no sign. So packing up, moving out of here. Three, four mile hike back. And we'll move on to a different train, see if that helps any better in these super, super hot conditions. So that place, talk about beautiful. I think I'm gonna bring the wife back here, do a little bit of Merriam's turkey hunting this spring. All right, let's hit the road. about two and a half miles down, about a mile left to go. I want to take a quick break to show you guys something. If you ever come across this, when you're out hiking, I'm warning you. That, I'm gonna call demon spawn. If you get that stuff on you, believe me, talk about a horrible, horrible experience trying to get it off. I would I would literally rather juggle three cactuses than try and pull those suckers off. I'm actually wearing my snake gaiters even though I'm back to the trail. I'm wearing my snake gaiters right now so I don't have to pick off as many of those suckers. If you see those things, avoid them like the plague. Whew. Man, I am sweating up a storm too. It's not going to be good for trying to sneak up on deer. I'm going to have to play the wind, obviously, but that wind shifts it all. I smell like a ripe pig. I don't know. I might find a... I think there's a little lake down here. I might just try and do a little uh, nature bath here. I was expecting it to be way warmer than that. 95 degrees today, and uh, it had last week four days in a row that it was 100 plus. I'm telling you what, this lake must not ever warm up that much because man, it was not what I was expecting. Felt pretty good though, so that's a deer camp bath there. Now I'm all set. Let's, let's hit the hills here, see what we can find. As you can see, the uh, terrain has changed completely. So, hardly any trees around here, and that's what I'm going for actually. I think it's been so hot that those deer are holding down in the bottoms of the canyons. And where I was, it was just so dense and thick and deep down in those canyons that trying to get in there and find them was really stacking the odds against me. So I'm scooting out into open grasslands and uh, hopefully we'll get into a situation where we'll be able to, you know, see a long ways and be able to get them picked out from a distance and be able to make a stalk. And when I say picked out, I don't mean picking out based on the rack. I mean, just figure out where they are in the landscape. So that's gonna be the goal here. We're gonna try and see if we can't locate them from a distance and work in. You know, they're still gonna be hugging down into some of these valleys and stuff, but there's gonna be lots of water where I'm going compared to where I was and hardly any trees. Hey. Hey. Saw my first deer. It only took three days. It's so far out that there's no point in even putting the camera up on the tripod and trying to film it but it's a deer. It's a doe, mule deer doe. But we're starting to put some things together. I got a good vantage point. It's getting late. Just gonna sit here until dark, ease out, come back tomorrow, same spot. 
and be waiting ready to watch them hopefully get up move around and see if we can get one bedded down and put a stalk on it this ground is so crunchy it's going to be tricky but hey we saw a deer see any antlers but I saw a total of four mule deer doe and one white tail doe so looks like a good place to start the morning you know these things just pop up out of what looks to be nothing and all of a sudden you're like how did they get there but it could be that there's a buck just over the other side of one of these coolies that I can't see Tomorrow morning he'll pop up playing this day, so I'm going to pack everything up and ease out of here. I can still see that doe down there. She's about 90 yards away. She's been eating down there real quiet, so I'm going to pack up and ease out of here and be back before daylight in the morning. So I'm walking through the prairie out here, trying to get to a good vantage point. You know, Indiana, you don't have any poisonous snakes to worry about hardly at all. I mean, they exist, but like so small, there's no point in worrying about it. Out here, it's something that you have to think about. Have not seen a single snake this entire time I've been walking around. And I'm walking down this hill, kind of moving quick, and, uh, Tell me if this would uh, get your attention. Is it me or does that sound exactly like a rattlesnake? I don't know if that's some kind of defense mechanism that thing's got built into it, but talk about a cool plant. I've never seen anything like that. Boy, it got my heart going. Brush up against it, it sounds like you got a rattlesnake about half a foot away from your foot. <laughs> First mule deer buck. I haven't even got a chance to take a good look at his rack, but I can tell you if I get the opportunity, I'm going after him. Sit and wait. See what happens. See if we can get him bedded down. If we can, then uh, try and make some kind of stalk on him. That's how far away he is. So the good news is, I've got a buck spotted. 
uh, the tough news is that he's got six does with him. Three of them right by his side like bodyguards, and three of them in between me and him. So they're still moving. They're, it's early in the day, so we're going to let them walk around, do their thing. And I'm hoping I can pinpoint where he beds down. And hopefully he'll bed down a little ways away from them. Something that gives me some kind of opportunity for a stalk. Otherwise, I may be in trouble here. But I'm going to wait. I'm only going to move in if I think I've got a really good chance. So let's just sit and watch. It's early. As you can see, the sun hasn't officially popped over the hill yet. Once it does, the good news is I've got the sun at my back, the wind in my face. It's perfect for a stalk if I can just get him bedded down in a spot where I can get to him without the bodyguards. That's what it's all about right here. It's fun. Best as I can tell from this distance, it looks like that buck's coming out of velvet as we speak. He's actually actively taking it off. And you can actually see some of the blood still on his antlers. Pretty wild. I snuck all the way around. I almost got alerted by those three does. They started blowing, but they were down in a hole, so it was pretty quiet. And I just stayed tight, and they ended up slowly working their way off. <coughs> you can tell I'm losing my voice because I don't have any water. Note to self, bring water next time. So anyways, I get on top of the hill where I've been trying to get to this whole time. Just as I'm taking my first glances. All of a sudden the deer pop up. The guy comes out on a freaking four-wheeler. No motorized vehicles out here, so it had to have been like the rancher or something. Well, I think I know what I might be coming out to Nebraska for next time. I do believe I need me a Merriam. Gotta cross that off my list. And we'll see you guys next spring. Got a little change of plans in scouting all over the place looking for a new spot to go to. Really hasn't been working out. I almost got stuck in sand about four miles back down a, a road. Sorry to the rental car company. It's numerous things one after another. Uh, dove hunters showing up in the weirdest places. Uh, four wheelers showing up driving within a hundred yards twice right through where I had actually seen the mule deer buck bed down. <laughs> in all my driving around right over there about half a mile is some really good mule deer habitat and it meets up with this really thick wooded area here. A lot of wetland and stuff, and I'm going to guess this is more whitetail habitat. They don't commingle very well, but I'm hoping that maybe there could be a muley living down in this because of how hot it is. The temperatures have just been crazy for the last two or three weeks. Today it's a high of 95, and then the next two days are a high of 101. So not good weather for hunting bucks. Right now they're pretty much nocturnal, that's the problem. It's so hot, they're not moving until like the last five minutes. And then in the morning, if you're not on them within just a short bit of time, they go down into the deepest stuff. You can't find them. You get down into the wetlands and stuff out in the, the hills and hollers and stuff. They get down in those wetlands where it's taller than their rack, so you can't even figure out where to get to to get on them. So it's probably whitetail country, but, you know, I'm not ready to give up on a mule deer just yet. I've still got a couple days left. But I've never shot a buck in velvet, period. So if a whitetail in velvet shows up, I'm going to have to think real hard. I only have one tag. Now I'm back where I have a chance at a muley again. Back out in the prairie. Beautiful morning. We just got to locate one.
pelicans. So I've located five more mule deer does and about four or five antelope. Again, they're so far off that the camera wouldn't even do it any justice. You'd see little specks, but no mule deer bucks yet. So we're gonna pack up, keep moving. Boy, that was quite a hike. But I do believe I'm on top of the world out here. As far as this area goes. There might be a few peaks out there that are a little bit higher within five miles of here. But talk about a view. Man, oh man. I believe I can actually see some antelope walking over there. If only I was after antelope, I'd be good. Boy, I'll tell you what, it's something else. If you haven't ever got out, try something like this, you gotta try it. Believe me, it's sweet. All right, it's back to the evening. So that means whitetail time. I'm not having any luck out in the sand hills in the evening for mule deer. They're not moving to the last 20 minutes. And trying to close the distance in the open is like pointless. So, evenings have now became whitetail time. So, <coughs> bugs. Man, they're bad down here. It's river bottom. I'm standing, as you can see, in a big grass field. Right over that way, where the sun is and it's so bright, is a huge alfalfa field. They've got a big pivot irrigation system. It keeps it lush and green alfalfa. It's like a huge food plot. Now, as you can see, all the way around here, it's the woods and wetlands and riverbank. And that's where the deer live. And they're working their way across this grass field, probably munching little as they go, getting over there right before dark. I did some looking on the aerial at this area and you can see clearly defined deer trails coming from the woods over there past that tree and this little shrub brush here. Most of the activity seemed to be over by that shrub brush cutting across to make it over there. Winds out of the northeast is going to be moving this way so I'm going to set up on the far side of that thing so I can see that whole big there's another grass field over there. It's only about a 20 yard wide strip. I'm going to set up on that side, but if I see a buck coming across this trail over here, I can back through, book my butt down here, using that cover, and get down about 30 yards outside of this tree and wait for him to pop through. So that's what we're doing tonight. Got my little nest made here. Look at this. It's a beaut. So, the trail that they're probably going to go through, you can see that little scrub tree over there, that scrub brush. They're going to probably come right in through that area over there, is my hope. And that's the woods that they're coming from, and the hayfield that they're going to cross. So I'll be able to see them coming from a long ways off, get everything ready. And I've got good cover here, I should be fine come through this hole here. I should be looking about a 30-40 yard shot. Once they get close I might even be able to wait and get a 20 yard shot depending on the angles. The mosquitoes are horrendous and I sprayed down with mosquito spray and it's not doing a thing. But luckily I've got so much cover I can sit here and swat away to my heart's content while I'm waiting for the deer to hit the field. It's about 6.15. Got about an hour and a half before dark. So, they'll probably be coming out across here, I'm going to guess, in the next 45 minutes to an hour. All right, I'm going to get back to swatting these skeeters.
so quiet and no wind at all, I couldn't make a move. I just had to sit and watch. He even heard me lift my crossbow up. So close. For a non-resident buck in velvet, that was a pretty nice buck. He was at 88.8 .8 yards according to the hawk range breeder. Now, coming out west, I practiced with the crossbow out to 60 yards. There ain't no way I'm flinging one out to 88. Unfortunately, it's my last day out here. Man, it's been awesome. Since it's my last day, that means I've got one morning hunt for muleys left. And I've got one evening hunt left trying to go after that buck if I don't shoot something this morning. So, pheasant sounding off over there. Yesterday, I sat up on a lookout and I watched about five mule deer doe come down the hill all what they're doing because of this heat they're coming off the hills at night and going down into these big cattails and marshy areas and bedding down and by the time you make a move on them forget it they're gone yeah, you know they're in cattails five six feet tall so now i've snuck myself back into where i finished the hunt yesterday out here it's this little perch that's probably oh between 100 to 300 yards for most of the uh, cattails and marsh area so hopefully I'll be able to see them come down the hill and make some moves while they're still up and around and then hopefully be in the right area with the right wind as they're coming into their bedding areas. Hopefully they come down the hill just like they did yesterday. You know, it's, it's not a pattern. It's just what I saw yesterday. It's the only time I've been out to this particular spot was yesterday. So that's what I have to go on. So that's what I'm sticking with. Now if a mule deer doe comes by, it's going to be a tough decision. Never had a chance on a mule deer period before and I'd love to get one, try the meat, pack one out and stuff, but at the same time, you know, I have a feeling that buck last night does that almost every night. So we'll see. I'll have to make a decision if the opportunity presents itself. Never would have guessed that you could watch a flock of pelicans glide in and land on a lake up in Nebraska. Weird. That's something else. That's cool. Well, we just had three mule deer does show up complete opposite side of the lake from where they were yesterday. Pretty cool. They just kind of appear out of nowhere. Pretty flat over there and just boom, there they are. Well, this just goes to show you that you can't make a pattern out of one. Just because those deer were on this side yesterday doesn't mean they're going to be on this side today. But, you know... Whether I get a deer or not, that's not what it's about being out here. You know, it's about the whole experience. You know, I've seen so many things, so many, so many bits of wildlife that I never knew existed. You know, little gerbil-looking creatures running around and pelicans flying in and, you know, just so many cool things plant life, some of which I don't care for. Heard so many coyotes, and that's another thing. At some point I'd like to get out here coyote hunting. Oh man, the sets you could do, and I hear coyotes constantly out here. Every day. But, 
you know, the main thing, the, the biggest thing about coming out on a hunt like this is not whether or not you get something. Of course, everybody comes out wanting to get something, but, you know, really what it boils down to is just getting to experience, like, the, the vastness of this place and see the animals that you've never, you know, had the chance to go after. It's not so much about killing, you know, everybody thinks first thing they think about with hunters, if they're not familiar with hunting themselves, the first thing they think about is killing animals. So little of it is killing animals. Now granted, the whole time we're out here, we're thinking about killing animals. <laughs> but the enjoyment comes from just being out here in it, experiencing it, and you know, having things, strategies you think are going to work and they uh, don't. You know, that's that's the fun of it, the challenge, the, trying to figure out how to get close to the animals. And it's another thing too, is like, you know, I could have killed a mule deer doe the first day I hit the sand hills. The first evening I had a mule deer doe standing at 50 yards. And I've been practicing up to 60 with my crossbow, hitting bullseyes, no problem. And, uh, you know, part of hunting is, is you select a target animal that you're going after. Uh, at the beginning of the trip, it was nothing less than a, a mule deer buck. I didn't really care about the size, but a mule deer buck. If he was big, great. If he was in velvet, even better. But it was just a mule deer buck. Then as that started to get harder to accomplish, you know, the cool thing about Nebraska out here, they have whitetails and mule deer, and they're in different areas. They don't live together. Like, they actually, the whitetails are aggressive, and they'll push the mule deer out of an area. So... It allows you the opportunity to be able to hunt mule deer in one area and then switch over and, and try and go after whitetails. So quickly, as I saw that the uh, chance to be able to get a mule deer buck was not going to be very easy due to the extremely high temperatures, I said, you know what, I'd be extremely excited to get a whitetail buck in velvet. Doesn't matter about the size, just want him to be in velvet. Another first. And uh, and I passed up all kinds of shots on does, white-tailed does. Then I said, you know what? A mule deer doe. I'd be fine with a mule deer doe as the trip progressed. And uh, still now, after watching those mule deer does going across there, for some reason, you know, I'd love to get one. But I think I'd just as soon watch them out here. I don't know. I'd love to have the meat. I'd love to take it home. I'd love to be able to try it. I'd love to fill a tag and have success and, you know, film something cool for you guys to see. But for some reason, watching those mule deer does run across this wide open prairie, uh, I just would rather watch it. And so that's one of the things that hunting is that non-hunters and anti-hunters don't understand is you know, you have lots of choices to kill something, but you make a selection in your mind, it's a goal that you're trying to attain, you know, going after a specific target animal unless you get it. A lot of times we don't take a shot, so I've got one more option tonight, you know, uh, assuming that a mule deer buck doesn't just magically appear. <laughs> Uh, which they do, but it's always in the headlights at about 10 o'clock at night going down the highway at 65 miles per hour. But I've got one more option left tonight, and that is to be able to go back out, hit that whitetail area, and maybe be able to fulfill one of those target goals that I've got, which is to try and get a whitetail buck in velvet. Don't really care what size it is, you know. And that was a nice one, I thought, really, especially for a public land a couple days to try and figure things out. So unless a mule deer buck decides to run across my path and commit suicide, uh, my last target goal left is going to be probably going after that whitetail buck. I've got a good plan in mind. I think that they're crossing a little bit different than what the aerial photo shows. So I know almost exactly to a T I range find him with the uh, Hawk rangefinder. He was at 88.8 .8 yards away. So all I have to do it's close about 40 yards off of that. You know, if I can get him 45, 50 yards, I should be good. Last chance, you know, just kind of 
throwing it out there, but uh, I feel pretty good about it. All right, last night of the trip, the last hurrah, giving her all I got here. So last night I was set up down that way, probably about 45, 50 yards from here. And that buck buck right through here, about 40 yards from where I'm at right now. Now, he could do the exact same thing, or he could follow the other trails that I saw online on the aerial photos. And one is down that way, another 125 yards. And the other one is this way, in the direction the wind's blowing, probably about 50 yards, 40 yards over that way. So here's what I've got. I made another little nest right on the edge here. That's going to be my view when I'm shooting. Right out through there, that's where he came through, was right out there. Got all my goods and stuff ready to go here. Rangefinder ready, all that good stuff. So, now, if he comes through like he did last night, I'm just going to sit tight. I'm going to have the, the crossbow on the tripod. I'm just going to wait for him to walk right into 40 yards and hopefully whack him. However, if I see him show up way down there, and he's going to hit through all the way down there, here's the backup plan. Now just so you know, this took me about an hour and a half at 1 o'clock in the afternoon in the sweltering sun to make this path. It wasn't here before, and it was not easy. See what I mean? Not easy. Now, of course, if I'm having to make this move, I'm going to be going a lot quieter. Now, as you see, it pops me out into the field that he's heading towards. The alfalfa field is over that direction. That tree down there, that other main trail is about 10 yards on the side of the tree. So I can shoot down here as quiet as possible, book it down there, and I made a little shooting nest down there about 30 yards from that exit. So let's hope I don't have to do that. Let's hope he comes right in. Let's hope he shows up at all. You know how bucks are. But, that's the plan. Sit over there, if it goes down that way, I'm going to shoot through this way. Now, on the other hand, if it goes down that way, I've got to shoot him before he catches my wind. So I'll show you plan C. Okay, back at the original nest. If he starts coming down this way to hit my downwind side, my only choice is grab the crossbow. He's right over here. And then try and shoot him standing right in this area before he hits my wind and takes off. So I've got three options set. Now I've got about four hours, something like that, until he showed up last night. Let's just cross our fingers that he shows up, period. Wouldn't that be a bummer? Boy, I'd love to get one more chance of getting that buck in velvet. I've never had a chance to get a buck in velvet, and that'd be something pretty sweet. I'm going to get completely covered in bug spray because they ate the crap out of me last night. Luckily, the wind is supposed to be 20 miles per hour out of the east and then the east-northeast. So it should be blown that way. So hopefully I'm okay. And with that 20 mile per hour wind, it'll be so noisy, it should allow me the chance to get up and make one of those moves if I need to. It's supposed to pick up and get really windy here in about the next two hours. All right, we'll see you at buck time. Boy, it 
that's changed quick. That front moved in, the temperature dropped, the wind picked up, it's coming up more out of the north, it's kind of a northeast wind, it's having a hard time talking here, which actually makes it even better for me as far as scent. Scent's blowing away from where he should be coming from. You know, I'm hoping that this will get him out in the field maybe just an extra 10, 15 minutes early or so. We'll see. You know, he may not show up at all, but man, things just feel right. It looks right. If he does what he did last night, it could be exciting really quick. I cannot believe that happened. I had him come out, I had pretty much given up. I had him coming out at like 7.15 and he was coming across the field fast. Tried to stop him, I kind of panicked, and in my panic, I just shanked my shot. I have no idea where it went, but it wasn't even close. He turns and runs and stops, and I'm like, I have no choice but to try and cock this thing by hand, which I've never even done. got the thing cocked by hand. I think I could have cocked it like 20 times with the adrenaline I had and managed to get a new bolt on. And I didn't think he'd be there when I sat back up. I thought for sure he'd be gone. And he, he was there and I said, I gotta range him. He was at 71. I said, well, I've practiced 60 and 70. Maybe I should try it, you know? But I didn't feel confident. All of a sudden he turns and starts walking towards me. This wind helped out so much to cover up the sound and everything that he turned and started walking towards me because he didn't know where the bolt and the sound of the crossbow firing came from. turns and walks at 40. I knew I'd range some spots at 40 and then at 30 and finally I was like, 
I gotta just take this shot when he turns broadside. Thirty yards. I heard it hit solid. He turned and ran. Man, he uh, tumbled, and I felt so good. All of a sudden, he stood up and took off again. I was like, "You've got to be kidding me!" He made it about another twenty yards, and he's dead in the field. I can't believe it. First buck in velvet in Nebraska. Last, I'm down to. I don't even know where my phone is. I'm down to the last probably ten minutes of my hunt heading out tonight now I've got to get my butt going because rain is coming here in about four hours and I've got to get this thing completely quartered out packed back to the vehicle and uh, caped out and everything so I've got a lot of stuff to do with a short bit of time before the uh, rain hits here Whew, I can't believe it Holy cow. Wow, so awesome. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nebraska ten pointer. Holy cow. Check that out, guys. I can't believe it. I don't even know if you can hear me with this stinking wind. That is so unbelievable. Now the work really gets started. I've got about three and a half hours until the rain hits. I've got to get this guy completely taken care of in the field. So I'm in a rental car. Such a pretty deer. Oh man, I can't believe it. Thank you. Well, timing couldn't work out any better on that hunt, I'll tell you. I ended up shooting that buck with 10 minutes left of my entire trip. 10 minutes of shooting light left on the last night before I had to hit the road. And uh, man, I'm just so thankful that I was able to end up getting that opportunity. Through the night, the storms came in really bad, super cold. You know, it was 100, 101, 98 all throughout the trip while I was out there. And uh, today, it's a high of 47. So a 50 some degree drop in the highs overnight. So I'm glad that I'm not out there still running around in this wind and rain trying to figure out how to get close to a buck. But man, I'll tell you what, talk about a really cool hunt. I mean, I got to see so many cool things. You know, got to witness mule deer, antelope walk in the prairies and stuff, try and do some spot and stalking even though it didn't work that great. And still ended up getting a really nice buck in velvet. So, white tail buck. But hey, that's one of my things checked off the bucket list. So I'm excited and you know, really thrilled. Uh, a lot of hard work trying to get that thing packed out of there. Uh, put on another two miles last night getting that thing quartered up and out of there and back to the vehicle. So total on the trip, if I had to guess, I would say in eight and a half, nine days, I think I probably walked about 40 miles to get that buck. But uh, man, was it worth it. And I can't wait to do it again next year. So if you've never got out and tried some of the out west public land hunting, you know, get out there. Get your license, get your stuff around, get a, a little cheap pack. I bought that that pack at a garage sale for five bucks. And uh, man, and talk about a, an experience that you won't forget. So, hope you guys had fun watching this. And uh, man, I'm looking forward to getting back out there next year again. Can't wait to do it again.